I've been here before. What do you think? Strange, isn't it? With a strange atmosphere as well. The pictures do something for it. Well, that was one of the Fitzgeralds. We're not quite sure which one she was. What was the period, do you think? Well, she looks like it could be the wife of George IV. <laughs> I don't suppose she was. <laughs> Lord Edward Fitzgerald over there, keeping an uh. eye on the, the entrance hall. Originally, a staircase came down here, which was moved to make room for a reception desk. But you can see from this hall, those walls must have been, what, about four feet thick? I should think easily that. Have you got any feeling about the place? I mean, coming into it, I mean, do you, do you get a sense of anything? Yeah, but the place is full of atmosphere, isn't it? I'm looking forward to seeing the other rooms. But here, certainly, there's a, a, a very strong atmosphere. I'd love to have met some of the people who've come through those doors. Sarsfield's men, possibly. <laughs> Cromwell's yes. men. Oh, we could do without those. I'm told, in fact, that the lower half of this present large room was, in fact, a library, and the top half something like a dining room. I wouldn't have said it was a dining room. I think it was a sitting room of some kind. Sort of parlour. A parlour, yes. <laughs> because it would be natural to lead from uh, uh, the parlour into the library, I think. Down below, walls four feet thick. Parts here, 13 and a half foot thick walls, honeycombed with hidden rooms, staircases, rooms that, in fact, uh -huh. some of them they ha that they haven't been able to, to find again in recent years. Any feeling at all about this place? Yes, uh, that I feel sure that uh, there's a uh, presence here and he would be wearing a suit of armour. Because not only did he surprise me, I think we surprised him. That's the, uh, that's the evil eye stone. And that's a very, very, very early piece of, of stone carving, a sort of evil conductor, the same way we'd put a lightning conductor on a modern building. Yes, I don't think I'd like it over my front door. Well, I'll tell you what will interest you. The oldest tree on the estate is that holly tree over there. Well, that doesn't surprise me, uh, because uh, holly trees were always put on either, were always one on either side of a gate. You look, go through the country and you'll see it. It was to keep away the evil one the evil eye or the witches or anything that goes bump in the night. That's appropriate because the legend of the wizard Earl has it that he, he practiced the black arts here. He was banished as a result of a spell that went wrong hundreds of years ago. The legend has it that on the seventh month, on the seventh day of that month, on the seventh year after the event, hundreds of years ago, that he appears again. And the reason we're on this road, which leads down to the graveyard, is that last July, the seventh month, approaching the seventh day, a young local man, very sober, very sensible, very well thought of young man, was walking his girlfriend home past that graveyard and they had a terrifying experience. I want to go there. It was just below this that Eamon Farrell and his girlfriend first heard the beats of a horse's hooves. We um, left the castle about ten past eleven and we were walking down the back lane, down by the graveyard. When we got to the end of the lane, we heard this noise. Just, you know, going right beside us, as if it was a horse. You know, it was good sound, as if it was within about twenty yards of us. So we just stopped and Charlene said to me, did I hear it? And I said, yeah. So this night's still happening. So um, it was, was bright enough in, in the field where we heard the noise. So I we went over to investigate just to have a look. And in the field, I could see a dark silhouette of a horse with something bright on top, sort of reflecting the moonlight. The man you saw uh, on horseback, do you think he could be wearing the suit of armor? Yeah. and. Uh, See, it, it, ran up the, it ran up the field and paused and came back down the field and paused and just then it ran towards the castle and just disappeared, I would say. Did you actually see the silhouette of a rider on the horse? No, but we seen something on the horse. We, like, we could see the silhouette of the horse, but we Reflecting could see... Reflecting the light? Yeah. As if it was a light garment or anything else. Chainmail or... or, or um... 
um, suit of armor. Yeah, could have been. Yes. What, what did you do? You, you ran home? Yeah, well, we just walked out to the gate, and when we got to the gate, we, at the end of the lane, we just ran the whole way up to her house and went in. And the first thing we did was went to the calendar. You know, because, because well, Jolene said to me, it's the 7th of the 7th. So when we took down the calendar, we discovered it was the 5th of the 7th. So, like, we were actually shaking. Got a terrible fright. So, <laughs> I, I couldn't come home that night. I stayed up there. This is the most unpleasant experience, unless uh, it's in your family. I mean, I think I was 10 when I saw my first ghost. Uh, so I've got accustomed to them, and uh, uh, so for the for the first time, it isn't very very funny at all. You must have been frightened out of your lives, both of you. We got a terrible fright, but the following morning, when uh, I had to be up early to go to work, and about quarter past six, I was passing back down by the end of the lane, and I stopped, and there was no sign of anything. I believe you. Uh, you have nothing to gain by telling a fairy story. Okay, Tom, you've heard a strange story there. You've seen and felt strange things in this house. I'm going to take you now to a room with a very peculiar reputation. Come on in, Tom. Make yourself comfortable. I told you this was a room with a peculiar reputation. Do you sense anything? Do you feel anything? Well, I think it's a very unhappy room. And right now, I wouldn't mind being elsewhere. So, tragedies have taken place in this room. But I don't know why it should be confined, although there are other uh, ghosts or spirits in the house. I don't know why it should be that this is the worst. I think there's been two murders committed here. What do a make man it and a woman. I didn't tell you about this room. I didn't say that we were going to take you to this room before we invited you over. No. And in no printed literature about the house, does it appear, and I can tell you now, does it appear that when the wall was broken open here, two bodies were found? Oh. That didn't surprise you? It doesn't surprise me because I felt they were both uh, around, so to speak, and uh, yes, I think also that there must have been a child slightly involved in this. I also think that it was somebody who was found out I think it may be a member of the family paying a visit to somebody else who was sleeping in this room. And I think they've certainly left their imprint behind. Well, this was the room. This was the chamber in which the so-called Wizard Earl practiced the black arts. Oh, yeah. Enough said. Do you feel in any, in any way in danger? <laughs> I, I would like to be elsewhere. Perhaps the bar even it would be preferable. What sort of reaction, Tom, uh, would you give me if I asked you to spend a night in this place alone? Don't think I'd give you one at all. <laughs> I much prefer not to be here. I have stayed in a lot of houses in, in England in the stately homes, some very good and some very haunted. Uh, but I don't think I would want to stay in this alone. Absolutely. I <laughs> 